power valve selection should be easy, but in reality, it's not. So today I'm gonna to show you the effects of making a selection and how the engine in my GMC reacts to it. Let's get after it. So what is a power valve system? Well, it's a fuel enrichment system that's based on the engine vacuum. And the purpose of a power valve is to improve that part throttle drivability, air fuel ratio, fuel economy by slowing down or not adding as much fuel when it's not needed. Now, when the engine's at high engine vacuum, that pressure keeps the power valve closed until the pressure drops when, and you, as you start to roll into the throttle, get into more aggressive driving, vacuum drops, and then the power valve, when it reaches its calibrated point, releases and starts to meter fuel to allow you to power through whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether it's driving a little bit more aggressively, passing, going up a grade, having a little bit more load on the engine, all of those things demand a little bit more fuel, and that's what the power valve is designed to do. If you haven't seen my video on a deeper explanation on how power valves work, it's worth the watch, so I'll leave a link above. You can go watch it. It's a good idea. That way you can understand a little bit more about it, because today we're going to do just nothing but look at the effects of the power valve selection you made and how it affects the engine. Today we're going to concentrate on making changes to this 80457. Now that is a Holley vacuum secondary 600 CFM carburetor, one of Holley's easiest, most popular selling part numbers. Most auto parts store chains sell them, it seems like. They're very easy to get a hold of, very popular, because they fit a lot of different applications. This carburetor comes stock with a 6.5 power valve, and so we're gonna put this today on the GMC truck. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the engine so you understand how what's what we're working with and understand what the power valve selection is gonna be. Blueprint crate engine, cam specs 202, 212 on a 115, really wide LSA, so it's got a little bit of RPM on it on the backside. That engine dynoed at around 360 horsepower at about 415, 400, 417 foot-pounds of torque. Really, really strong little engine. At idle in park, it makes about 22 to 23 uh, inches of vacuum, which is really strong. It's got a really, really good, uh, good vacuum in that engine. So the power brakes operate really well, drives really nice and does really well with a 600 CFM, 650 CFM size carburetor. So now you got a really quick understanding of the carburetor we're going to use, the engine it's going on. Now let's talk about the power valves and the selection that I have here and how we're going to do some testing on it. Now this vacuum secondary carburetor only has a power valve in the front, doesn't have one in the rear. Some of the double pumper carburetors will include one in the front, one in the rear. One of the popular things to do is to plug off the rear and only uh, and go up a few jet sizes, typically six to eight numbers on that uh, to add more fuel on the secondary side and not uh, rely on uh, engine vacuum dropping and trying to tune through it. Completely understandable. There's no right or wrong way. Whatever the engine's asking for, that's what you give it. We're not going to talk about timing. We're not going to talk about jet sizes in here. We're not going to talk about fuel system setup. All of that is very, very critical. Today, I just want to show you what happens when you make a selection for a power valve, how the engine reacts to it at the time that that fuel comes in based on the vacuum. So we're going to look at engine RPM, we're going to look at AFR, and we will monitor engine vacuum all at the same time. And you'll be able to very clearly see on the AFR, in most instances anyway, when that power valve opens. And that's what we're really concentrating on. Because really, all you're trying to do here is give the engine the right amount of fuel at the right time. That's what the power valve system is there for, is to help you do it. Just similar to a step-up spring in an Edelbrock carburetor. Holly's a little bit more complicated to change that valve, but it's not that, that difficult. Should be something you should be able to do very easily. Obviously, each engine's a little bit different, but what you're trying to do here is just get to a starting point. Then once you get there, then you can kind of tune a little bit around it and see what's the best uh, scenario for what you're working on. Just like step-up springs on an Edelbrock carburetor, power Power valve selection isn't just made once, forgotten about, and it's over with. You can adjust these based on the drivability, based on the what the time that the engine wants that fuel being delivered, based on the vacuum drop. All those things are very important. And sometimes you make jump between, you know, one or two of these sizes in power valve just to time it out and get 
the best delivery time on that uh, fuel to the carburetor. So don't think you're going to just make this selection once, forget about it, and all you're going to do is play around with jets. Jets and power valves get tuned really at the same time, and sometimes making a jet change cures what you're looking for, delivers the amount of fuel that you're going to need, and sometimes it's the power valve telling it the time that you want it to be delivered. So again, just don't think you're going to play with it once and forget about it. Power valve selection can go all the way through the entire tuning process. Today we're only going to be dealing with part throttle, around town, cruising type operations, no wide open throttle. We'll talk about that in a later video because certainly there is the right way to do that and the right way to get the most power out of what you're working on. But really we're just going to talk about drivability today because that's really where the power valve shines as you're trying to give it the amount of fuel that you need at the time that the engine wants it. So go back and reference that other video that I mentioned earlier to really dive a little bit deeper on how to make that selection. But essentially we're gonna determine power valve sizing. Now Holly recommends a couple of different ways of doing this, but really the most, well, I guess well known and probably the easiest because you're talking about not like jet sizes where you can go very, very minute on the amount of fuel. You're talking about kind of a wide little stretch here. And we'll talk about the power valve sizes I have here in just a second, but manifold vacuum at idle in drive, in gear, if it's an automatic, if it's a manual car, it's gonna be a little bit different, but that manifold vacuum at idle divided by two gives you your power valve size. Now these power valves are, they're not, if you have a 20 inches of vacuum at idle like we have in the GMC truck, you don't have a 20 inch power valve that matches up to it. It is divided by two. So if we have 20 inches of vacuum, then that is obviously 10 and we have a power valve that is fairly close to that. So that's what we're gonna do. That is a 10.5 power valve. That's what we're gonna start with in the truck and we're gonna look at some of these other steps. I don't know that we're gonna have time to look at all of them, but that is a 10.5, 8.5, 6.5, 5.5, 4.5 and 2.5. Now I'm gonna tell you that we are gonna definitely test the 10.5. We will probably do the 6.5 because that's what's available in most of these carburetors. And we're probably gonna skip over all these and go right down to the 2.5. If I have more time to, to do it and play with the, the, the 4.5 and the 5.5, maybe we'll get there. But quite honestly, those three is probably gonna be the ones that we're gonna look at. Let's go ahead and get the front bowl off this carburetor, change the power valve from the 6.5 to the 10.5 and we can start there and show you what that looks like on the GMC as we drive through some of those conditions. So let me get that, let me get a fuel system configured for this one, because it's a little bit different than the Edelbrock that's in the back side of it, but we'll still look at fuel pressure, obviously, because we want to make sure that this carburetor is getting the proper amount of pressure that it needs and not too much or too little. Uh, so we'll do all those things first, get it all set up, and then uh, we'll take you out to the truck and show you where we're going to start. All right, got her installed, dialed in, uh, running pretty good, I guess. Uh, not bad, I mean, for what I can do at idle. Uh, fuel system's a little janky uh, with what I had to do with fuel line regulator, but it's all I had, so whatever, it'll work for right now. So what we're going to do, get this thing warmed up, we'll get it out, and then uh, we'll just uh, take a look and see what the AFR looks like uh, for timing of when that pops in, and then we'll look at engine RPM and vacuum at the same time so we can kind of watch it all. Uh, but it should be pretty interesting. 10.5 power valve is in there right now. Electric choke is wired open. They didn't want to monkey with that, so it's just wired completely open. But uh, other than that, we're ready to roll. See what happens with the 10.5 power valve. All right, this holly is a little funky for some reason. It's the carburetor. Certainly nothing to do with power valve. We're at uh, about... 17, 18 inches of vacuum. Uh, AFR is a little funky, but uh, should be all right. Let's take her for a little minute spin here and uh, watch power valve drop. It'll be open. Closed. kind of see when it opened up there 
10 inches of vacuum went really, really uh, rich. But uh, that's what we want to do. Now that was part throttle, so it's a little rich. So let's drop it down. Let's instead of jumping to the 6.5, let's drop to the 8.5 uh, next and see what happens. All right, we dropped down to the 10.5 power valve and idle set. A little better on the vacuum, 18.5 maybe on the vacuum. So, all right, let's see how we go. Okay, we're back to the 6.5 power valve. See how the 6.5 does. Vacuum's a little bit better at 20. And we're right at 18.5, a little bit better. running a little little better I think at that transition okay this is the 2.5 power valve so we'll see if we run into any lean spots here right. yeah Definitely lean. Way too lean. Way, way too lean. Hopefully the vacuum gauge picked all that up, but uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely lean. So no transition into the power valve, adding more fuel. So obviously we can rejet it, but power valve wasn't working because it has a 2.5 in there meaning we ha we're gonna have to drop way down in vacuum uh, for that to pick up and start metering fuel so interesting uh, to see how lean that was well we tested all four of those um, which one was the most surprising to me none of them really um, you know the watching that uh, 2.5 not open was kind of a cool deal uh, when you're that lean, when you're under that much demand, it's not good on the engine. Uh, certainly not good for uh, pistons and uh, everything else internally there. So, you know, I, again, I wasn't aggressive on the throttle. I wasn't, you know, horribly, um, you know, wide open by any stretch, but certainly enough that the power valve should kick in. And like I mentioned right at the beginning of this, it's all about timing when you're trying to get the fuel to deliver. And think of the power valve that way, same as with step up springs on an Edelbrock carburetor. You're just trying to deliver it at the time that you want it and when the engine is demanding it. And that's really the key to carburetor tuning in general. You're trying to deliver the right amount of fuel at the right time when the engine is asking for it to make the most power and get you down the road and get you through the situation that you're trying to go through, whether it's idle, whether it's cruising, whether it's trying to get on the expressway and going from you know, 30, 35 miles per hour up to 70 miles per hour. You're just trying to deliver that 
fuel when the carburetor is asking for it. And that's why all these adjustments are on the carburetor with power valves and step up springs and metering rods and jets and vacuum secondaries. All of those things are there to help you do that. And that's all you're doing. That's basically what carburetor tuning is. You're just trying to deliver it when the carburetor is asking for it. I hope that gave a good representation of it. I hope you were able to see what was happening in it. I, I love doing these you know, types of videos where we look at all sorts, sorts of different situations and try to throw them from most extreme uh, from one end to the other and kind of hopefully see. Now, what would I do with this uh, truck? I would probably leave the 6.5 power valve in there. The carburetor needs a little, little work. There's something that's not quite right on this. Uh, it just needs probably another good cleaning. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, we'll get to that one day. Maybe I'll, uh, I'm not planning on keeping this and I don't plan on destroying it like we uh, ruined so many of these Hollies in the past with cleaning solutions. So if you want to watch some of those videos, they're kind of ugly what we did to these. So I, I do apologize for those poor little Hollies. We made them really, really uh, ugly in the end. If you have any questions on power valve tuning, don't hesitate, leave them down below. Uh, just leave me lots of details of what you're working on. It's, it's always helpful because uh, typically I always end up, I feel like I'm asking more questions and I'm providing answers, but uh, uh, you got to give a lot of detail that way. I know the total situation, what you're working on, and yeah, we can hopefully figure it out together, at least if nothing else, help you get you on the right path. And uh, that way you can uh, get to tuning and, you know, getting your carburetor operating the best it can. So good luck with your build and your tuning, and uh, yeah, hopefully get it all dialed in, and hopefully that helped you out. We'll catch you guys on the next one. We'll see you.